predators look for strays that have split off from the group, stay together. Well, listen, we'll stay close to each other then. Now I'm going to search the full on this side guys. of the screen. What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Steven Spielberg. I want to go over his career, the kinds of movies he makes, and even the world of Jurassic Park and what that has meant to the fans over the years, as well as the movie industry and everything in between. Because in truth, I think this is something that's been on the public's mind for a very long time now, and it's something that would really help explain what it is that I think people miss from certain types of movies and what all of that means to Jurassic Park or Jurassic World in general. Basically, I want to make the case for why he should really consider coming back and taking his time to really sit down and not just make, but direct a Jurassic Park movie specifically. So you might ask why, and the way I want to start this whole conversation is kind of by going over what makes a Steven Spielberg movie a Steven Spielberg movie, because I don't think we, as audience members that don't make movies, are really able to articulate our thoughts in ways that are actually understandable sometimes to producers and executives in charge of these properties that we've all grown up on and uh, all, all of us care about. But when it comes to Steven Spielberg's work specifically, the first thing to really talk about is the fact that this isn't just some name listed in the credits. I don't want to get anybody thinking like it is. You know, when you see a film by or directed by in a movie, this isn't someone who just does work for money or because he's bored or, you know, something like that. Steven Spielberg, he makes movies that are very personable to him. And they're the kinds of movies he wants to make when he makes them, and they're the kinds of movies that resonate with people because they have that element of relatability that you can't really recreate in any sort of imitation, no matter how good of the intentions behind that recreation happen to be. And it, it's no disrespect to the people involved, like a J.J. Abrams work on a Super 8, or Colin Trevorrow's work, or someone else, like, like even James Mangold with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's different because you're emulating what a man poured his heart and soul into on a creative level so it's more than just a project it's 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 personal and i think we as an audience we see steven spielberg's movies we recognize his work and we're kind of like i want that not only because i like the movie but because i want to hear you and i want to hear what you have to say specifically because there's a connection there that's what i'm trying to say now as jurassic park fans on this channel we all know that one of the things steven spielberg has said that he's kind of challenged by is doing sequels because he doesn't really relate what he did with the indiana jones movies as sequels or at least he didn't at the time in which he did that interview you know when he was talking about the lost world where he said that that was the first pure sequel he'd ever done whereas last crusade and temple of doom were a bit different but he hasn't really ever come back to direct you know specifically take the helm of one of these jurassic park movies ever since jp2 and i think there's something to really be said about that especially on an audience level because in truth i think we can all feel it when we go to see these movies at the theater and what kind of projects they turn out to be when they end their runtime. you know i did a video on dragon curve my second channel a couple of years ago on spielberg's ideas for jaws 2 which was actually a movie centered around quint and the sinking of the ss indianapolis and that that to me screams Steven Spielberg the same way Dieter Stark getting lost in the woods and Henry Jones Sr. getting shot in Last Crusade do. And when you look at the Jaws sequels that Universal eventually made, well you get a sense that what actually made these movies great to begin with was just lost in the shuffle of creation. I mean, without Spielberg, uh, something died in the Jaws movies, like very literally. It, and and his ideas for the second one, which was a prequel, just sounded like it sounded like it came straight from him as a person. Now, as far as the critics, you know, movie critics are concerned, they usually say repeated things like, well, that's all because of the story and characters. It's all about story and characters. They repeat this stuff endlessly, like it's the end all be all of fixing every movie's problems. And I understand why they say that, because it's kind of like if you want a great car, you got to build a great motor. You know, you got to make sure the engine is in check so that it actually doesn't plock out and die on the side of the road. But the thing is, you can make a movie with great story and great characters, even if it's just on a, a technical level. Like, yes, you did that. That worked. You did this. This works. But you can make a movie like that and it's still not 
feel like a Steven Spielberg movie. One of the things that defenders of the Star Wars prequel trilogy have brought up over the last 10 years is that George Lucas was making George Lucas Star Wars movies. Were they always perfect? No, and nobody really, I don't even think George Lucas has ever said that, but that doesn't mean that they aren't George Lucas projects. In the same way, when I look at a Temple of Doom or a Crystal Skull, I see a Spielberg movie that isn't afraid of being a Spielberg movie in the most pure and honest form instead of a carefully curated replication with all the technical checks being made on a list and successful stuff that worked in the past, you know, baked into a formula for now. Because at that point, I mean, is that not what became of the, the way producers went about making Friday the 13th sequels or National Lampoon movies? They're like, well, you gotta have this, you gotta have this, you gotta have this, and then just put it out as like a, a new board game or, or something. It's it's just devoid of actual artistic direction and, and I guess soul, you know, like what actually comes from him as a person. A soul, I guess would be the right word to use and that's not a dig at any of the people that have made follow-ups to Steven Spielberg or George Lucas or anybody like that that's not what I'm trying to get at I mean I saw the first two seasons of The Mandalorian and I thought wow this actually makes me think of George Lucas version of Star Wars it really did not perfectly because you can't replicate Lucas I mean many have tried and it just cannot be done and I've talked about how much I thought Jurassic World was a big comeback and I love to see Steven out there in interviews with the Jeep Wranglers and the gates behind him and everything Thing. And I mean, there's a sense of artistic authenticity that comes from seeing the guy who was involved with creating the world, you know, seeing that guy at the very least involved in a project, even if they're not in charge of it, it, it kind of lends to a certain credence. Like, okay, good job. He's there. He's there. But in the case of Jurassic specifically, I think the return of Steven Spielberg would actually be something of a personal challenge to him. And one that I think the audience genuinely wants to see him work at, as well as one that, if I'm honest, is necessary for the health of of Jurassic Park as a brand and could even be a little adventure for the director to take on himself. Because you see, in regards to his current work, Steven has been doing much lighter material. I mean, it's usually something bright, and fun, aimed at various different audiences. Not always, but typically, you know, this is kind of what he gets, gets into. And I always love the fact that it's still very personable. You know, it's still him that's making these movies. You can tell by the way everything's framed. But when he didn't do Indiana Jones 5, I knew that it was more than just the Jurassic brand that he was kind of moving away from. They're, they're not the same thing, obviously, but they're similar types of blockbuster. And if I'm honest, I know that the fan base has wanted him back in the seat for Jurassic for a long time. And I mean a very long time. So much so that I can even speak for myself when I talk about Jurassic Park as a series and why I love the brand and why I still make videos on them, even though I haven't been over the moon about some of the more recent things that have been going on creatively with Jurassic. I'm always honest, you know, with you guys. But when I think about why I love Jurassic Park, apart from the first movie in the books, I just think of Lost World. And I know that there is something of a disappointment that he feels with that movie and how he's the you know creator of it. He, he His work is way different from our viewing experience. He actually made the thing. And it's probably the same way he views Temple of Doom or something. But let me tell you something, man. Straight up. I am not alone when it comes to loving the Lost World Jurassic Park. Because the Lost World Jurassic Park represented Spielberg's return to movies after a short hiatus upon completion of the first Jurassic Park, but probably more important, Schindler's List. And I know Amistad came out the same year as Lost World, but all eyes were really on Jurassic Park 2 back then. And as a kid that grew up in that time period, it really was Jurassic Park and the Lost World that kind of created the movie world from Michael Crichton's books into a, uh, you know, it made them a reality. The material that was coming out around then whether it be Trespasser or Warpath or the canceled TV series or even the promotional material, this was a very Steven Spielberg world that he'd created. And it was one that was wholly different from Indiana Jones and Jaws and other properties. And every time you saw the logo, you knew that this was kind of, it was kind of more than just another one-off that he had directed. Like you get a certain part of his personality in an Indiana Jones or a Jaws or, you know, uh, anything else he's ever done, whether it be even the work that he did from uh, Stanley Kubrick's story on AI or something like War of the Worlds. Jurassic Park. Is a, is a specific Spielberg, like, part of his spirit that I think we all miss. And I, I wonder if he misses it, too, because it's so freaking cool. This is in some ways, and I don't know if you ever 
felt this way about it. Like I said, in some ways, Jurassic Park felt like his Star Wars. Like what George poured his heart and soul into with all the mythology and all the research he did behind story structure and how he wanted to do a tragic fall for Anakin. Revenge of the Sith is great, by the way. I love that movie. And where, you know, both George and Spielberg shared partnership in how they created the Indiana Jones movies. Jurassic was really, that was like Spielberg going full throttle. He was just like, this is mine. We're taking, you know, th th this is my representation of a dinosaur adventure science fiction cautionary tale. And I think we kind of see that at the very least, you know, we, we feel it on a viewer level. We understand it, like, on a cinematic landscape. So for him to come back and direct one of these movies after letting other people really play in that sandbox for over 20 years, it just sounds like something of a treat. I mean, he's never even attempted to do that before. At no point did he ever really come out and say, you know what, I'm making an announcement. I'm going to do Jurassic Park 4 after Joe Johnston, or I'm going to do Jurassic Park 5 after Colin Trevorrow. And instead, he kind of just let other people take the wheel. And in a lot of ways, I'm glad he did, because I like a lot of his other work uh, that he did outside of Jurassic, and I like some of the Jurassic World stuff. I think Bayona probably got it the closest when it comes to actual cinematic visual flair that people were looking for, but you just can't beat a Steven Spielberg Jurassic Park experience, man. You really can't look at that T-Rex roaring in San Diego and not go, yeah, that's a Steven Spielberg movie. I mean, it's just uh, impossible. It's, uh, it's making me smile, actually, right now, talking about it. So what would it be like for him, you know, someone who has stepped away from the director's seat for so long to actually say, you know, what what if I did come back what if I came back to this world how would he approach that I mean I think we all want him to come back because of the kind of filmmaker he is and the kind of soul that he pours into his work because you, you just can't duplicate or clone <laughs> that uh, pun intended just imagine the kind of nuance and personability he could bring to a project if he sat down and said okay you know what what do I want to do here what is the message and warnings of Jurassic Park like how does that resonate with me today and what do I want to communicate to people what is the world of isla sorna and where i left it at in the lost world all those redwood trees sat in the middle of a costa rican island with dense fog and rusted metal sitting in isolation where little compies scurry by and you know they're only interrupted by giant thundering footsteps that ring out at a moment's notice and like a, a roar an ungodly creature screaming out like somewhere and uh just just silence after all that said and like what kind of things do you think he could really create from coming back into that world. I mean, it's exciting, man. Like, it just sounds like something that is ready to happen. And I, I want to see it happen. And the fans have been vocal about what kinds of things they want to see. I mean, I've done loads of videos on this stuff before in the past. And look, I don't mind if Universal takes any ideas of what I've put in these videos. I do not care. I'd love to talk to them all about it. I'd love to actually go there and be like, hey, I'm a big Michael Crichton guy. I, I love the ideas that he's putting forward. Here's what I think he was trying to convey. And here's what the fans really want to see. Uh, it w I'd, I'd love Spielberg to do one of these movies. I really would. I mean, I think that everyone is just ready for that right now. And I think if, if Steven Spielberg were to actually think about doing another one of these, you know, a, like a return to his old stomping grounds, I want to see him come back and hammer out a movie that actually comes, it comes off authentically from him as a person because I think that's one of the things that made Jurassic Park so successful to begin with. And honestly, the only other thing that I think I would want to see Steven take a crack at outside of Jurassic Park in a more, you know, adventure film or, or grand genre thing would be uh, something like the Book of Enoch, which is Second Temple Jewish literature that expands upon Genesis 6 and details the rebellion of the Watchers and how they spread depravity in the world. Kind of random, you might say, that I would even bring that up. But I was thinking about it earlier and I was like, man, this could make, this could actually be something that Steven Spielberg would really get a kick out of. I just hope he wouldn't make them aliens, which I know he's done so much of already, and maybe he's tired of that. I I, I just think the more spiritual concepts from Enoch are, are kind of intriguing, and they sound Spielbergian in, in the context of a movie, but I'm getting way off topic. What do all of you guys want to see? Do you think Steven Spielberg could make a really good Jurassic Park sequel today? And would you like to see him come back and really make a movie that is 100% a product from him. I think it sounds like a great idea and I would love for this to happen. Um, by the way, there's been some comments saying that I'm responsible for the John Hammond prequel pitch that came out a couple of years ago. I just want to let you guys know that this isn't true. I didn't do any of that. In fact, I think one of the guys that actually pitched that uh, idea. He was actually tagging me and stuff a couple of years ago saying, Clayton isn't talking about this. Are you behind the Hammond prequel pitch? And I was like, dude, I know you are. And I know you're just trying to tag me in it. So I'll talk about it. And it was, it felt manipulative and weird. And look, I never really talked about it because it just didn't want to. And then he started calling me a hack and a fake fan. And 
just all kinds of other names. And look, I don't have anything against it. I just don't really care to see a Hammond prequel. I'd much rather see a Jurassic Park movie with dinosaurs. You know, dinosaurs are kind of what this is all about. But like, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on Steven Spielberg coming back and making a movie in the Jurassic Park universe happen to be, I would love to hear all about that. I, I think that sounds awesome. I just want you guys to know, if you see comments that are like, yeah, Clayton's behind the Hammond thing, I am totally not. It's, it's fake news. But whatever your own thoughts on Jurassic Park happen to be, I'd love to hear all about them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.